All right, guys, it's time to put down the Jamesons and talk about better Irish whiskey that's available on the shelf. Now, did you know there are four types of Irish whiskey? Single malt, single pot still, single grain, and blended? Well, today we're going to talk about one of these four categories. Today we're talking blends, and while Jameson is easily the most popular and recognizable name in blended Irish whiskey today, there are a few other available blended Irish whiskeys that offer a lot more interesting flavors and are widely available. Welcome back to What's on the Shelf Wednesday on the Mash and Drum. I am Jason C. And this is the series where I bring you quick reviews of whiskeys that you can actually find on the shelf, including bourbons, rye, scotches, Irish whiskeys, and more. So what's on the shelf today? After many requests to look at some great Irish whiskeys, I have three great selections for you that we will talk about. Take a look. So as I mentioned, there are four types of Irish whiskeys. Today, we're gonna to talk about three fantastic examples of a blended whiskey, which is a product of blending different types of whiskeys. Now, it is generally the product of mixing one or more higher quality straight or single malt whiskeys with less expensive grain whiskeys. The higher the malt ratio, the better the whiskey. It can be made in pot and or column stills, made at a single distillery or multiple distilleries. Some of the biggest names in Irish whiskey blends are Jameson, Tullamore Dew, and even Proper 12. But in the realm of available Irish whiskey blends, these three in particular stand out and I'm gonna recommend over any of those three any day of the week. First up, let's talk about Rider's Tears. Now, Rider's Tears Irish whiskey is bottled by Walsh Whiskey Distillery. It's a blend of single malt and aged single pot still whiskeys. Pot still meaning Irish whiskey is made from a combination of malted and unmalted barley on a pot still. This actually makes Rider's Tears a historic style of blend of 60% single malt and 40% pot still and made entirely without grain whiskey. Remember when I said earlier, the higher the malt ratio, the better the whiskey. Well, this has no grain whiskeys, which is what you'll find in most blended Irish whiskeys. Contemporary expressions like Rider's Tears and others are changing the way people think about Irish blends. This is primarily aged in X bourbon barrels. It's 40% ABV and only about 35 bucks per bottle. You dive into the nose here. The first thing that jumps out of the glass is like this really nice uh, apple note. Almost like honey crisp apples. Apple peel. It's got some nice vanilla notes from the bourbon cask. Kind of has your nice typical uh, Irish whiskey, those nice little bit of a honey characteristic. Hint of orange there too. Just a really nice nose for an Irish whiskey. Let's try it. Man, just a lot of beautiful apple notes. This very apple, honey, a little bit of uh, you know, some like butter, a little bit of spice there too. I think the pot still gives it a nice little bit of a, of a creamy mouthfeel to it. And then what I found is the more you sip this, the more the the bourbon notes you know come to the forefront. The apple turns a little bit more vanilla, caramel, even a little butterscotch too, which is really nice. Really oily mouthfeel, definitely more interesting than, uh, than Jameson, in my opinion. All right, next one up is Black Bush from Bushmills. Now, Bushmills being one of the most recognizable names in whiskey in the world, Bushmills is the oldest licensed distillery in Ireland with a history that dates back all the way to the year 1608 when King James I granted a license to Sir Thomas Phillips to distill whiskey in the area of the River Bush in Country Antrim in what is today Northern Ireland. Honestly, Bushmills Black Bush is on the bottom shelf usually, but drinks way above its price point. First, Black Bush is aged in Oloroso sherry cask and is roughly 80% single malt to 20% grain. Remember, the more malt versus grain, the better. 
Also, this whiskey is generally eight to 10 years old. That's right, great age on a whiskey that only costs about 30 bucks, yet it's bottled at 40% ABV, but packs a lot of flavor at an affordable price. Let's pour a little bit of this. It's top of the morning to you. That's a terrible Irish accent. <laughs> All right, so on the nose of this one, man, more of that apple coming through. That reminds me a little bit of the Rider's Tears, but it's kind of overlaid with raisins. It has a nice little spice to it. I think I'm picking up some cinnamon as well. It's got a lot of flavor coming out of the nose. Yeah, definitely the raisins, maybe hint of chocolate. Get some nice Oloroso sherry notes here. You get a little bit of like a grape note as well. Man, really, really good. All right, let's go for a sip. Yeah, it's got this beautiful mix of like red wine, cinnamon, nutmeg, a little bit of nutty characteristic to it as well as a little bit of a nuttiness to it. It's oily. Yeah, it's interesting because I think the maltiness of this, it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a oily or mouthfeel. The same thing kind of experience with the Rider's Tears. Yeah, more chocolate coming through, a little bit of cocoa. I mean, it's just, it's, it's very balanced. It's got the sweet, it's got some spice to it. It's got a nice little chocolate kick, a little bit of that like grapey, like wine type of characteristic to it as well. Just a, I mean, for 30 bucks, I mean, you're getting something with some really great age on it. It's really affordable. It's probably overlooked by a lot of folks that just go towards Jameson. But if you want something, a, a really good affordable Irish whiskey to sip on for the price, for something you're getting from eight to 10 years old, absolute hitter of an Irish whiskey. All right, lastly is one of my favorites, Power's Gold Label. Now, John Power and Son was one of the historic producers of Irish whiskey, along with John Jameson, William Jameson, and George Rowe, one of the big four Dublin distilleries that dominated the worldwide whiskey trade during the 19th century. Now, in 1886, Power became the first distiller to bottle their own whiskey. Power's Gold Label was among the best-selling whiskeys in the world at a time when most whiskey distillers, both in Ireland and Scotland, sold their whiskey by the barrel to retailers and independent bottlers. Now, if you go back to 1966, John Power and Son combined with John Jameson and Son and the Cork Distilleries Company uh, formed Irish Distillers. Now, French beverage conglomerate Pernod Ricard acquired Irish Distillers in 1989. Since then, Jameson became the world's leading Irish whiskey brand. Unfortunately, Powers has been kind of ignored, and it's a fantastic Irish whiskey that, in my opinion, is superior to Jameson. Now, Powers Gold Label is a blend of 70% five to seven year old pot still whiskey matured in ex barrel barrels and only 30% grain whiskey. Now, also with Powers Gold, we're getting a bit of a bump in ABV. We're going up to 43.2%, plus it's non-chill filtered and one of the greatest intros to pot still character of Irish whiskey, all for about 30 bucks. I'm gonna pour this right here. Now, this is their new style bottle. The, the older styles are still out there. The John's Lane and Three Swallows uh, offerings are also out, outstanding, but we are focusing on just blends today. So let's go to the nose here. So this one I think is a little bit more honey forward, get more honey, more cinnamon. The apple is still there. Yeah, this is kind of like a little bit of an apple pie on the nose, which is kind of nice. Also some light caramel in here too. Maybe slightest hint of uh, like a pineapple, a peach, sometimes a little, you know, the higher ABV is a little bit, you know, more age of, a, of an Irish whiskey. You start getting some tropical notes here. Get a little, a little bit of that here. Not, not too much though. All right. Wow. So it's way more peach forward on the, on the palate. Peach, apple, again the cinnamon, spice, all kind of combining, making a really nice experience. It's really good. I, it even that slight bump of of uh, ABV really just gives us a nice texture to it. Again, the peach, the apple, the cinnamon, the combination, there's a nice little spike of black pepper that you get that just kind of bursts onto the scene, which is really nice. Yeah, the apple and the peach notes actually, once you get it up front, it kind of makes way for the black pepper, the butter, maybe even a little bit of like an Irish like soda bread type thing going on. And then as it works its way back, you get a little bit more of the apple and peach notes and black pepper, just, uh, you know, a great, great Irish whiskey. Great introduction to pot still, as I mentioned. If you've never had anything in a pot still, especially in Irish whiskey, this is an absolutely great pickup, for, again, for about 30, 35 bucks. 
So there you have it guys, three great and better options than Jameson, give them a try. The best part is you won't break the bank buying any of these and they are great Irish whiskeys. Next episode we will explore the single malt category of Irish whiskey. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button below, please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you've had any of these three, uh, if you're willing to try these aside from Jameson or Tullamore Dew or any of the other ones that I mentioned. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers. Hope you enjoyed this episode of What's on the Shelf Wednesday. Take care, everybody. See you soon.